We need like background music. Or for Simon, Simon to be humming. <laughs> you do a little a cappella set, Rod and I. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the end of the world as we know it by REM. <laughs> Skipping ahead. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome. Uh, it's around 11 o'clock. I know that people are going to be continuing to file in throughout this first section. Um, and uh, thank you to everyone who, uh, who joined us a little bit early and got to see some great behind the scenes footage of Alberta EcoTrust at work. Um, <laughs> Uh, my name is Vicki Stroich, and uh, if we haven't had a chance to meet, I'm Alberta EcoTrust Engagement Director. I'm also going to be the MC uh, for today and, um, and be speaking along with my colleagues to, to some of the questions that you asked us and some of the information we'll be able to give you. And so welcome to Alberta EcoTrust's Environmental Nonprofit COVID Impact uh, Town Hall webinar. And, um, we hope that you and your staff and your volunteers and those that you care about are safe and healthy. Um, before I do a quick overview of how the event will work today, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that we're gonna have over 60 participants as part of this webinar, and you're all gonna be zooming in from locations across our province, across Treaty 6, 7, and 8, the traditional lands of First Nations and Métis people. Thank you for being here today and thank you to the almost 70 organizations that filled out our environmental nonprofit COVID-19 impact survey. Uh, we're going to use today to share some of those responses with you and they very much informed how we programmed this webinar. We're also going to be sharing what we learned from this survey uh, with some of our peers in the funding community and the community that supports nonprofits um, over the coming weeks to sort of help them understand what's happening with the environmental nonprofit community through all this. We have described the event as a town hall style webinar. So we're gonna be sharing, starting with some updates from Alberta EcoTrust, which might help answer some of the questions that came forward in the survey and give you all a sort of sense of, of what we're considering as we proceed with our own work through this unprecedented period of uncertainty. Um, and then we're gonna give you the results of the survey that you completed and answer some of the commonly asked questions that you sent us and we'll offer resources where we can. So that's the webinar part. The town hall part will take place in the chat box, which you should be able to access on the menu at the bottom of your screen. I think mo screen, most people are, are very um, comfortable with Zoom at this point, but um, there is a little chat box section and uh, our colleague, our program manager, Simon Irving, who you can see there, is, um, is going to be manning the chat box. So he'll be there um, and uh, monitoring what, what you have to say and the questions you have to ask. So after we have a chance to provide 
an update with some answers, hopefully, to some of the questions that you sent us in the impact survey, uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, what other questions do you have? Um, what additional resources are you aware of um, that might be useful to this community and to help uh, support others in, in the sort of things that they're thinking about at this time? Uh, Simon's going to be monitoring that chat. He's going to be theming some of the questions. And a little later in the program, we're going to open it up and get him to ask some of those questions. And of course, we will try to answer whatever we can, the best way we can, uh, or be able to take some of those questions away and try to understand how we might respond or, or ask for assistance from some of our, our own community in, in helping provide those supports. So we're also recording this webinar and capturing some of the questions and information in the chat. We're going to be sharing that with all of you and probably sharing it in a blog post and, and a little further for the rest of the community who wasn't able to join us today. So I hope that is helpful to setting the scene. Um, and uh, we're going to start with some updates from Alberta EcoTrust. So um, some of my, my fellow team members are here and certainly some of them are also online watching the webinar. Uh, so I'd like to start by introducing our CEO, Pat Letizia and our Vice President, Rod Ruff. Um, so Pat, I'm gonna hand it over to you for our first um, update uh, about Alberta EcoTrust. Pat? Hello, thanks Vicki. Uh, good morning to all of you. Um, it's nice to see uh, both some old friends and some new, new voices and names in our chat box. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk just briefly about th three different things based on some of the responses to the survey and some things that we um, want you to know, I guess, about what we're doing. First is that, um, like most of you, we're really paying attention to what's going on in the, the changing landscape and, um, you know, thinking about the impacts to our own organization and then kind of translating that broadly out to the community. So we're, you know, this is um, one way we're, we're, we're doing that is by reaching out to you and asking you what, what you actually are uh, feeling and going through. We're not sure yet um, what um, within our own organization will change just yet. Um, we're, we're in a very uh, big kind of transitional time right now with the um, uh, the the new programming that we're going to be offering, so uh, that that that's secure. Um, we've been chatting informally and formally with our funding colleagues, uh, both within Alberta and across the country. Um, I think it's important for you all to know that um, some of the large foundations across the country have been paying attention to what's going on in Alberta for the last year or so and there's a lot of concern about making sure that the environmental community remains uh, strong and resilient here. Um, and also um, I have a meeting tomorrow with uh, a group of deputy ministers um, in, in a couple of different ministries that are um, looking at how we can pull information together for the, the nonprofit community in Alberta and both in responding to the sector broadly and also in um, getting information from the sector. Um, specifically, the impacts that we're looking at um, from the, the pandemic and the, the things going on in Alberta in relation to EcoTrust, it's, we want you to know that our, our grant funding is secure for 2020, so our, our, both our spring and fall intakes will proceed as normal. Obviously, there's a higher, um, a higher demand for funding and our budget is set, so we're not going to be able to, um, at this point in time, leverage any additional resources, but, we're, but, but we'll continue to work on that. Um, the Climate Innovation Fund, which is this, uh, uh, our new program related to the Low Carbon Cities Canada program, the LC3 program, that is also secure. Uh, um, that transfer will be happening uh, imminently from the federal government to us. And we are in the process of uh, developing programming there. Some of that money will also be available to the community, but it will be um, more focused on both uh, the cities of Calgary and Edmonton and our work on um, emissions reductions and climate change 
um, planning with, with both of those cities. We're also looking at, at some of the potentials of co-funding or um, working alongside other funders, trying to be a little bit more creative in how we get um, resources out into the community, either by stacking or layering or um, pooling. You know, we're not sure. Those are just kind of preliminary conversations we've been ha having. For us and for, for some of you, the, the challenges with corporate funding are still a bit unknown. We have, you know, some of our funding secured uh, for this year and we're, we'll continue to um, seek out new opportunities, um, partly by kind of improving the invitation for, for that kind of support and, and looking for other ways to leverage additional resources, um, not just funds, but maybe other, other ways that the corporate sector can support the environmental community. Um, we also have funding for some key projects that we've been working on, so that, that work will continue. Um, so it's more or less business as usual in the near term for Alberta Ecotrust, so I hope that gives you all some confidence. In addition to the, the grant program funding, we are um, continuing to look at how we build capacity and engage uh, all of our stakeholders. As most of you are aware, um, a, few year ago, a few years ago, we worked on the Alberta Narratives Project, and that actually led to um, a, some more kind of in-depth national research. And uh, we were part of a, a national funder coalition that looked at um, Canadian climate narratives, and that uh, there have been a lot of results of that work over the last year. Um, the, the research was shared across the country. There were a round of um, grants that went out across Canada. Two communications hubs were created, um, one in Western Canada, one in Quebec. Uh, there's been a, a developmental evaluation of all of that work, so we have a really clear understanding of the learning and um, the, the first two phases of that project have led to, um, although it's been stalled because of the, um, uh, the kind of social distancing that we're all uh, undertaking, but the, um, there will be a national communities of practice initiative uh, pulling together those who have been working on this project. And we've been trying to prepare um, for introducing a, an Alberta community of practice around um, climate and environmental narratives and communication. So stay tuned for more on that. We, we do have funding in place to um, get some of that work started and we'll be focusing primarily on um, both skill building around environmental, primarily climate communications and uh, these communities of practice. We will, we're, we're uncertain yet about the, um, how the uh, environmental gathering that is scheduled for early October, how that will manifest. And if we are unable to actually deliver that as planned, we will replace that with um, some kind of deep engagement, um, uh, being as creative as we can to both engage people and continue to kind of share the knowledge and share learning um, that we are all kind of embarking on together. We're, um, Vito will talk about this shortly, but we're, um, we're going to be looking um, really deeply, I think, at the results of our um, Navigating the Future survey, which is more of a census of the environmental community. And that will inform um, a bit of a program review here at Alberta Ecotrust. We always like to be as responsive as possible to the needs of the community and also um, um, proactive around some of the opportunities that may fill in some of the gaps that are um, identified through, through this work. And we continue to be really open to e emergent opportunities to in both engage all of you and all of our stakeholders and to make sure that we're all connected in the work that we do together. Thank you, Pat. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to pass it over. Thank, um, thank you for that, um, and uh, and for 
this the the sort of fulsome overview of what we're thinking about on a range of different levels. Um, Rod, uh, I wanted to pass it over to you. I see that you're um, relaxing in a field in the castle, um, <laughs> which looks really peaceful. Um, and there's no one around you, so I'm happy to see that too. Um, uh, just because you know of social distancing, not because you know. Anyway, um, I uh, and I, I don't know if there's there's a few other questions that may have come up about um, about our grants program in particular uh, and and how it's working this year and what what we're seeing and what we're thinking about. So I'll pass it over to you just to say a few words about that. Sure. Thanks, Vicky, and uh, thanks to Steph Lego for providing my my background here in the castle. I'm not sure if it's locked down like K country, but. I'm there in spirit right now. Um, in terms of our grant programs, I'll start with our active portfolio of projects. So right now we're supporting more than 60 initiatives across Alberta in a variety of manners. And so our grants team, which is Simon and Katie, have been working closely uh, with all of our grantees uh, to address um, any outcomes or activities relief that are needed. And by that, we just mean providing maximum flexibility in adjusting your project scope, deliverables, and timelines to allow for our grantees to take all the precautionary measures they need to stay safe, but to also shift gears as needed to our new COVID reality. So if you are an active grantee of a Eco EcoTrust and you need to adapt your project, please reach out to us. We'll support you to fund the best solution for you, no matter what the situation. And we're doing, we're working really hard to minimize any administrative work that comes alongside that. And, you know, Simon is your best resource for that moving forward. And we'd love to hear from you because uh, it opens up many ways that we can support you in addition to adjusting your projects. In terms of our 2020 grant programs, as Pat mentioned, we are holding the course. We're, you know, at least uh, set up to disperse a million dollars in grants this year through our four active grant streams right now. Um, in addition to some potential further funding coming through the Climate Innovation Fund. I'm going to focus mostly on our current programs, uh, starting with the Environmental Grant Program. We just completed the letter of intake, letter of intent intake for major projects, which are projects up to $30,000. This is a phase one of a two-phase intake. We worked really closely with applicants, you know, testing the idea of do we need to delay this or do we need to be more adaptive. The, the feedback we got was that let's just go through with this as it is. It's more important to get money into the community as fast as possible rather than delaying, although we have made a few adjustments to let groups that were a little bit behind apply late. So that's been great. We did receive the largest um, intake of projects, uh, applicants um, in our history. Uh, so there's a lot to work through there. I look forward to completing that process uh, in the next two to three months. In addition to that, we have our community grants program. Uh, the deadline for that is May 20th. Um, you can apply for funding up to $7,500 in that stream. And similar to how we have been working with our active grantees, we've been directing our decision-making committees to evaluate these proposals based on the needs and priorities of the applicants. So we've seen some groups that have need to adapt to their programs, whether it's education or public engagement or otherwise. And, and come up with novel solutions to the current, current crisis. Uh, others are continuing the work as is, um, and they're not as heavily impacted. Both are completely valid, and we're gonna evaluate uh, proposals just based on their own merits. There's, we're not changing our priorities or shifting our criteria, which already leans pretty heavily to applicants defining the need in their terms and, and what they need to deliver. Uh, so we look forward to seeing what that looks like. I know in the survey that Vicky walks us through, uh, there was a good balance of groups that just need immediate help in the short term, but also groups that are really concerned about how we keep environmental issues front and center and how do we actually work through this period of discontinuous change. And so um, I look forward to seeing how we continue, continue to support the, um, environmental nonprofits um, this year through our grant program. And as Pat alluded to, we will continue with our fall intake uh, on the regular schedule. All the timelines for our programs are, are online and they, they, are not, they have not adjusted, but if you look at those timelines and you have concerns about applying and, and your needs, please reach out and we'll do our best to be adaptive. I also want to highlight that capacity building grants, uh, where you uh, look at an internal project focused on building your own organizational effectiveness, are always eligible to apply to our grant program. And if you are thinking that this time might be a good opportunity to look inside um, at the strategies, tools, resources that you need 
as an organization, this might be a great time to build out those proposals and put them in front of us. In addition to our environmental grant program, we also have two grant programs that are specific to the city of Edmonton. We have the Eco City Edmonton program and the city's IPCC legacy resource program. Both programs have an emphasis on climate change, both mitigation and adaptation. The intake for Eco City is open right now with a deadline of April 17th. So if you are undertaking work in the capital region that has a climate change focus, I highly recommend you reach out to us. The city's IPCC deadline is uh, later this summer. It comes in June 15th. The city has a research agenda along with some questions that they're hoping uh, the sector and academics can help them answer. And again, I point to our website and the resources there. We just updated it with a new research agenda for 2020. And as a reminder, all of our grant programs use the consensus-based decision-making model where community members work together to fund the projects that they think will have the greatest impact. Um, we, we know the need is huge though. Our current intake this spring was over $850,000 in ter terms of total ask. And we don't take that lightly. As Pat mentioned, we're committed to working with the government, with other funders to uh, find resources for the community. Uh, if we can't fund you through our programs, we're deeply committed to try to find other ways that we can connect you to funders based on your needs. So as always, reach out to us, uh, schedule those debrief calls. Um, we would love to strategize with you and help you meet your needs that way. I, I'm not sure what the future holds in terms of funding for the community in terms of the Climate Innovation Fund, but we were planning to launch those programs in the fall. So as usual, just stay really closely in touch with us through our mailing list, through your personal relationships with the organization, and stay tuned to what that looks like. And that's all I have on the grant programs, Nikki. Great. Thank you, Rod. Um, I'm just going to touch on the final two, uh, two points here. Um, Pat certainly talked a bit about the kind of the, the things that we're weighing in terms of the environmental gathering in 2020. Um, what we know for certain is that the value of bringing the environmental community together to um, learn from each other, build connection, and share um, success and resources with each other is so, so valuable. So we are planning on creating some of those opportunities over the course of the year and, and through this period of physical distancing, especially. And I wanted to encourage people, if there's a particular way that you would like to connect with others, um, please feel free to reach out and, and let us know. Um, if there's some way that, you know, of course, taking, uh, keeping in mind what we can do uh, at any given moment uh, in terms of our ability to bring people together. However, we can always bring people together like this. And, and I'll talk a bit about a couple of things that we have in mind um, in, the, in the short term, but there's ways that you wanna to come together or things you wanna to come together around, please let us know and we'll do what we can to, to bring folks together however we can. Um, also, the, the Navigating the Future survey is something that we, a project that we have been working hard on as well and that we do plan to launch in the final week of April, and that's navigating the future. So uh, Pat certainly mentioned this, but um, this is our environmental nonprofit sector survey, and Alberta Ecotrust has a very long history of um, surveying environmental nonprofits to get a better understanding of the landscape of work that's going on across the province and um, inform our own programs and projects so we can better support the work that you're doing as organizations. We also try to share this information with our peers in the funding community and the nonprofit support community so they better understand the environmental nonprofit community as well. And hopefully we can leverage more support uh, to support your work. Um, many of you may have participated in Mapping What Matters, which was our survey from 2014. And if your organization did participate, um, we will be following up over the next week or 10 days, um, given Easter it might be closer to 10 days, with, um, with all the organizations that participated in that, with your results, with what you gave us from 2014. So to give you the opportunity to reflect and reconnect with what your organization, uh, where your organization was at about five years ago. And then we'll be following up in the final week of April with our current survey, which we're calling Navigating the Future. That survey will go to um, all uh, nonprofits and registered charities with an environmental focus in Alberta. And indeed, if you got the email with the COVID-19 impact survey and you're here today, you will be getting the Navigating the Future survey. Um, I, will, I will tell you that the survey is comprehensive. It's a bit longer than that COVID-19 impact survey. So it, uh, it does delve deep. Um, it has questions about your work, about how you do your work, uh, what your organization is thinking about, 
and what it may need to be even more effective and more uh, provide more impact to the community. Um, it's vitally important that we hear from as many organizations as we can to get a really accurate view of the sector and what's needed in the mid to long term. So we want to thank you in advance for participating and um, please take a look for the survey in your inbox uh, the week of April 27th. Uh, we're going to be following up with a webinar to answer specific questions uh, that might arise as you fill out Navigating the Future. And um, we've also set up an email address, survey at albertaecotrust.com, which you'll get with the survey if you have ongoing questions. Uh, and we're certainly thinking about, um, about how we can uh, help incentivize your, um, your participation. And we know that um, people are thinking a lot about um, how they use their time and, and, and we appreciate your time so deeply. So thank you in advance for, for contributing to navigating the future. Um, so Yes, can go ahead. Add, uh, you and I had a brief chat this morning about yes. those incentives. Why don't you just go ahead and, and okay. uh, identify them? Great. Late breaking news. <laughs> um, so our, uh, we've been discussing possible incentives for the Navigating the Future survey and recognizing, um, recognizing where people, uh, where organizations are at right now, um, and certainly to celebrate the work that you're doing. We would like to, um, we're going to be doing two draws from the completed surveys over the course of the survey period uh, for $5,000 per draw. So two $5,000 grants uh, that will be uh, drawn from the participants in the survey over the course of the survey period. So we'll make sure to include much more specific um, uh, information and ensure that you're able to um, that you understand how that how that will work and when we'll be making those um, when, when we'll be making those draws from the participant list of people who uh, of organizations that have completed the survey. So more information to come, but that's what we'd like to do to acknowledge the time you'll be putting into the navigating the future survey. Great. Thanks, Vicky. Um, and speaking of surveys. Um, thank you again to everyone who, um, who, who filled out the COVID-19 impact survey for environmental nonprofits. I'm just going to walk through a few of the um, responses and then we'll get into answering some of the questions that you sent us. So um, the first question we asked was, what have been the most significant impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on your organization? And um, these were the results. Um, so certainly the majority of you are, uh, are grappling with cancelled programming and delayed programs. And certainly a lot of the programs that um, you were planning had revenue attached to them, events, um, programs that uh, people paid to participate in. And um, so certainly lost revenue as a result of delayed programs has been a, a big part of the experience that uh, organizations are having. Um, some of these things we may have expected, they may not be too surprising, but it, it's valuable for us to know um, what is happening on the landscape. So we've also seen, of course, the transition of staffing to online and the increased strain on human resources. Um, and a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the things that were reflected in the other category were tied uh, more specifically to some of these other um, impacts that, that you reported. So that was question one. Uh, question two, we asked what information or resources would be valuable to help meet short term, and we were thinking up to the next eight months, um, challenges your organization is facing as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. So certainly funding was a huge part um, because with the loss of revenue, we recognize that, that funding is a, is a big part of what, what you feel you need and um, so much has gone online uh, that uh, technical or software support, the yellow line is technical or software support for putting programs online. Um, and that was another question that, that we're going to touch on a little bit later is, is the pooling of resources around that, but also technical and software support for um, bringing your staff or connecting your volunteers online. And so human resources and peer support was another element of, um, of what you feel you may need. And um, uh, we're also hoping to put something together and I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. 
um, to help support that. We asked the question as well, what do you anticipate the mid to long term, so after eight months impact of the COVID-19 pandemic will be on your organization? And certainly um, one of the major issues uh, brought forward is lost revenue. Um, and uh, certainly that is something that um, in addition to the revenue that's been lost very recently, um, we're all concerned about what the economic situation in Alberta and the world, um, what the impact that will have on uh, mid to long term funding. And so that's something that, that everyone is thinking about. And um, the stalled projects and activities that are happening, I know that there's, there's several different uh, aspects of that. Some is being able to continue to be connected with your supporters. Um, some of that is also about the, the research work and some of the work that you're all undertaking and how that's impacted if you can't do the work in the summer. Um, and uh, connection, um, uh, concern about um, staffing and the ability to, to um, support staff over the mid to long term and the, to continue to be connected to those that support you the most, members and volunteers in the community. And um, the other major thing that we're all thinking about is uh, in this moment where um, attention is placed so, so specifically and so uh, urgently on, on health and well-being and, and on the, the economy and, and um, what we're doing as a society, how do we um, continue to think about the priority areas that environmental organizations focus towards? And, um, and that's something else that certainly came up as a long-term impact. So thank you very much for answering that question. And again, some things that I think we, we may have expected, but valuable for us to know from you. Um, the final question that we asked you was, what questions do you have for us? Again, we may or may not be able to provide questions or answers for all of the questions, but we certainly wanted to know what you were thinking about. And of course, many of you had similar questions. Um, and so we've pulled a few of them and uh, uh, Pat, Rod and I will answer as best we can here. Now, I'm sure you've already been using the chat box. I've seen it pop up a couple times and I'm sure Simon has been on there um, working away, listening and, and responding. Um, so what we'd love for you to do is as we're answering these questions, as new questions arise for you, I'd encourage you to ask them um, and Simon will collect them. And then uh, at a certain point, we'll open it up and, and ask him to ask us those questions. And if there's resources that you're aware of um, that might be valuable uh, uh, to share with any of these questions, please also feel free to contribute them to the chat. Um, and Simon will record that. We'll make sure that we record what's in the chat and share what we can. So, um, away we go on the questions you asked. The first one was, how are other organizations managing these shifts? Um, this is a really great question. And um, upon receiving this question and, and thinking about it, the one way that, that we thought we might be able to answer it is actually by bringing some of you together to share resources and strategies and things that you're thinking about. So um, over the next month, uh, we'll be putting together some topic specific online gatherings um, for environmental nonprofits who might want some, some peer support or an opportunity to share resources. In particular, there were three topics that came up um, uh, from the survey that we may want to, that we're thinking of focusing on for the first three. One of them is um, conversations about human resources. Um, another one is conversations about summer programs. I know a lot of you are thinking about uh, what happens with my summer program. Um, and also volunteer engagement and stewardship and member stewardship during this period. How we stay connected um, and communicate with those uh, people who support us the most during this time. So please look for some no for notices for some of those online peer groups over the next month and register if the topic is of interest to you. And as we discover resources on these topics, we're also going to try to make sure to amplify them through uh, through our channels. And, um, and so please follow up, uh, you know, uh, certainly Rod mentioned, if, you, if you're not already on our newsletter or you don't already follow us on uh, Twitter or on Facebook, please, um, please go ahead and do that. There is information on our website uh, about how to follow those different channels. 
So we're going to try to um, gather different organizations for some peer support on specific topics so we can talk about how are other organizations managing these shifts. Our next question, how do we sustain momentum on environmental issues and communicate thoughtfully about them while people are focused on response to a crisis? What are Alberta Ecotrust priorities in keeping the environment a focus in Alberta? I'm going to pass this question over to Pat uh, to reflect on. Pat? Hi, thanks. Um, it, it might surprise some of you and, and not, not many of you that I, I spent a lot of time thinking about communicating about the environment and it's a, it's a particular uh, interest of mine. Um, you know, there's 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 some something to think about i think as we watch what's happening across the world um on how who the messengers are in this uh in this time of kind of deep concern and need um which of the messengers have credibility for the for uh you and for the people in you know in your uh kind of world your your community I've also been thinking a lot about um, what what kind of messages or what kind of calls to action really resonate with people. And I think you, you, what I'm seeing is it's it's calling people together as as members of a community to to take care of each other and to um, you know, work towards common good. And um, when I think I think when I think of the uh, what's been successful in how to engage people around issues like climate change and uh, you know others that are a little harder for people to understand um, it's really the complexity of issues that um, makes it difficult to communicate uh, especially um, when you're looking at you know are you are you are you talking to people in your local community are you talking to people in in multiple levels of government all of those things are the things that we that we are paying attention to, and I think that we're right now, especially, we can't be insensitive to the the worries and concerns of the public. It's probably not the time to be launching uh, uh, big environmental uh, or climate change campaigns or trying to uh, create big parallels between climate change and the pandemic. Even though we 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 see the parallels and we know that these huge systemic problems are um, what we're all trying to work on together and those who are working on um, big complex poverty systems, food security systems, they're facing the same issues that, that we face in, in talking about um, some of our, our big environmental and complex challenges and many of them are, in, are interrelated. So I would, I would be saying that we have time right now while the focus of the world is on something else to be working really cohesively together, working strategically together to use this time and space to be prepared for the kind of strategic opportunities there will be when the time is right. And that we are that we don't just turn to inward and focus on the fact that we don't have a, enough money for our current programs or um, our current projects, but to be thinking about what um, what will the world look like in six months? Is you know is our has our, is the approach that we've been using going to be the same approach that's going to work in the future? And so um, we're going to try and create some space in Alberta for this kind of work, for uh, to build the skills around communications, to to uh, share valuable lessons that have uh, worked in other part of uh, or that have been um, kind of learned in other parts of the country. And, and try to get some additional resources into Alberta um, to help us uh, work on this together and be a little bit more cohesive, coherent, and strategic in how we when it kind of move the dial on some of the uh, change that, that we need to see. So Thanks. that was a bit of my philosophy as well as some, some practical things that are, are going on. Great. Thank you, Pat. Um, the next question that we had uh, was what are the best links to understand EI and emergency support offered by the government and, and I should also say and um, other funding organizations 
um, and what links are best for HR support. Um, there are a lot of resources and links online right now and what's being offered in terms of, in terms of what's being offered for emergency funding and wage supports and, and indeed that stuff is emergent, uh, things are shifting and changing. Um, so part of what I think is difficult is, is how much information is appearing there and how it's shifting. So um, we are going to post a short list of some links that we have found most useful. Some are from government sources, some are from our community foundations and organizations like Imagine Canada or Integral Org. Um, uh, we're going to try to post those in the chat box. I think if Simon is going to do that, we're also going to be posting it um, uh, on a blog post and, and trying to, to make sure that those um, go out to you. And, and as, as others appear, we'll make sure to amplify them through our, communi our communications channels um, wherever they feel most appropriate. Um, so thank you for, for um, following, those, uh, following those channels and also taking a look at some of those resources. And, um, and yeah, and hopefully in the peer resource, um, the peer support uh, resource group that we put together as well, there may be some more opportunities for us to discuss that. Uh, question four, uh, is there a way to pool digital and tech resources to support organizations moving programming and meetings online? Um, I'm gonna throw this over to Rod Ruff. Thanks, Vicki. Uh, this is an interesting question because this is actually something we wrestle with on a continuous basis when we work with other stakeholders or grantees who see us deploying certain technologies um, that they might be interested in using. And so if you're having challenge, uh, challenges in moving to online engagement or remote work, remote work, virtual leadership, uh, I'm going to share a great resource that's being created from InnoEve and the JW McConnell Foundation. It's actually like a Google Doc that they're just contributing to daily as, the, as everything uh, moves so quickly. Uh, but it's really a focus on organizational resilience in the time of crisis. Um, and it has many of the technology, it has the technology solutions baked into it in, in terms of pointing you to the right direction. I would always encourage every nonprofit in Canada to connect with TechSoup Canada uh, in terms of meeting your software needs. Um, at, a, at an affordable price. That being said, if there are things that you need explicit help with, um, it's, it's worth an email to myself or to Simon just to kind of see what that is. In the past, we've let other ingos piggyback on our webinar software as it means to um, not necessarily need to you know, subscribe on their own. We've let groups piggyback on our mobilize platform as well um, as a way to kind of cut down the costs there. So we're deploying a variety of different technologies internally because we do a lot of remote and administrative work anyhow. And if you do have um, some specific needs, please just reach out and we'll, we'll do what we can to either find, uh, point you in the right direction or find a creative solution where we might be able to share uh, resources. Thanks, Rob. Um, the, the final question uh, before we get to your questions that we wanted, that, were, that was asked of us is, is there a place that all of the environmental education programs being hosted online are being collected? And um, apparently there is a place. Uh, our good friends at the Alberta Environmental Network are gathering a list and plan to amplify it through their newsletter and, and through their channels. So if you haven't already gotten to, in touch with them to let them know what your organization is offering, you can contact Ras Miyagawa and um, we will put his, uh, his email address um, in the chat. And uh, we have let him know that we will be letting you know. So um, you can let him know that we sent you. Uh, so thank you very much for asking that question. And of course, um, as AEN puts that list together, uh, we also plan on, on making sure that it, it gets out there. And um, if you have things that you have put online uh, that you'd like shared, um, please just you know, let us know and certainly let Alberta Environmental Network know as well. So, now we're going to turn to your questions. And um, I have seen the chat lighting up uh, throughout this. And, um, and uh, Simon, um, I think we have about, probably about 10 minutes uh, to answer some questions. So uh, what questions would, uh, would folks like to ask us? Sure, yeah. So just remind folks to put their questions in the chat box. We have a couple that have come in, um, in particular a comment just about TechSoup, because I know uh, Rod referenced that and I included a link. 
um, but that there's some caution that anyone wanting to use TechSoup services, um, they are currently experiencing quite a backlog and taking much longer weeks, if not over a month to respond and review applications. So just a word of warning there for folks that are looking to access TechSoup's services. Good to um, know. Yeah, and so we, we did have, we have one question in um, and hopefully folks are typing away on any questions they may have. Um, but one of them is, uh, they're just looking, and I'm not sure we can actually answer this, but um, there's an important piece of information that uh, someone is looking for clarity on is a 30% reduction of revenue to qualify for the federal wage subsidy. They've been following Imagine Canada, but no additional clarity that they're aware of. Um, and just wondering if there's anyone with other experience or more insight. So I'm not sure if Rod, Pat, or Vicky have some additional insights uh, on there. And I would just also say if there are is anyone listening that has some insights to just please put them in the chat box and I'll make sure I, I share them out. I myself do not have any more um, information about that. I don't know if Rod or Pat, you have come across a resource with more clarity on that yet. I do not at this time. I, you know, I would definitely rely on Imagine Canada um, for this information because everything is changing so quickly. <laughs> um, it shifted from the 10% wage subsidy to the new one that Steve is referencing. And I don't think anyone necessarily has it completely figured out how this will impact charities now, especially considering it's really hard to, to gauge a revenue loss um, in a crisis, especially for like an Ingo. So I would say plugged into Imagine Canada, especially because they're doing a lot of advocacy and lobbying of the federal government for the charitable sector. Uh, they might have some calls to action for you to participate in, uh, and they will definitely be the best resource for getting up-to-date information. Um, I will just add, I, I read this somewhere in the last week, but I can't remember where it was, um, that the, what they will be doing is looking at um, your, your revenue as of April 2019 compared to your revenue as of April 2020. That, that might be... Um, um, how they how they gauge the the difference. So I don't know if that's if that was just a suggestion. I, I, I really can't remember, but that that has just stuck with me. Thank you for the question, and um, and we will certainly um, keep our uh, keep our antenna up um, to try to see what we can learn and try to share it as soon as we can uh, in terms of what we learn about that question. So thank you for asking it. Simon, is there Great. another question or? Uh, no, that's all the questions we have so far. Um, wow. Yeah. We've done a really great job of sharing our information, right? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, thanks everybody. I mean, this, um, the qu questions will continue to come up. And, um, and so uh, we appreciate you letting us know what your questions are. Um, and continuing to give us uh, as much feedback as possible around what you're thinking about or what might be helpful to you. Again, we will try our best um, to respond and try our best to, to find that information and share it or find avenues to share it. Um, but, uh, but if we don't know what you're thinking about, we, we certainly can't try to, um, to support. So thank you for letting us know what your questions are. And, and again, you, uh, there's a few different ways to get a hold of us, certainly through our website. Um, is one of them. Uh, many of us uh, follow info at albertaecotrust.com. So as things come in, please, um, we, we will try to respond to them as well as we can. Uh, has anything else come up, Simon, or shall I move ahead? Yeah, okay. I think it looks like we can keep moving. All right. So thank you for, um, thank you everybody for being here. And, and um, Again, just a reminder um, in terms of next steps, one of the things that will be coming out soon is um, navigating the future. And so again, the information we collect during this survey is not only valuable as we navigate the future, but we also hope that it's helpful to you. Everybody who completes the survey will receive um, the information that they have given us back. And so um, you'll have that complete list of, of how you answered the questions and, and the things that you're thinking about to help you with your planning as well. Um, and so hopefully that's very valuable to you. And with this discussion in mind today, I mean, we've been working on navigating the future for a little while now. Um, and this, uh, this situation um, with the COVID-19 
pandemic and, and its, its impact on organizations we'll be serving um, has certainly made us think about some of, the, some of the questions and some of the things we might need to think about moving ahead with this in mind. And so one of the questions we've added to navigating the future that I would just love for you to, to take away and percolate um, on is uh, what tools will the environmental nonprofit sector need to regroup or recalibrate in the mid to long term with this in mind? And so um, please let that, that sit and, and think about it. And, um, and we look forward to hearing your response in uh, our upcoming survey. And again, you should see that in your inboxes the week of uh, April 27th. And in terms of next steps, um, we have been recording this, unless I, unless, unless I didn't record something properly, but I think I did all right. Looks like it's um, recording. Yay. Uh, so we will share that recording, uh, this recording and any resources that have come up um, with all of you. We also plan on putting together a, um, uh, a, web, uh, a, a blog post on our website to share some of this so that people who ne weren't necessarily here with us today also have access to this information. Um, and uh, watch your inbox for navigating the future. So uh, my final, um, my final uh, thought is um, just to say thank you and thank you to my Alberta EcoTrust colleagues and a big thank you to everyone for joining us today and for the work that you're doing in the community um, to advance action on environmental challenges that, that we're facing. And, um, and I don't know if Pat or Rod or Simon, before we sign off, there's anything you wanted to share before we, we close off, but I just thought I'd offer up the floor. Uh, I would just like to circle back to something that Vicki and Rod both mentioned related to kind of connecting and using technology. K keeping the community connected has always been really important to us. And as Rod said, we have, um, good software that we can use. And so in addition to the, the peer support groups that um, uh, Vicki's already mentioned in response to the, to the um, things that were identified in the survey, you know, we're happy to continue hosting space and holding space um, using the technology we have. And so if, uh, as, as you're working together in, in both in local groups or around issues, um, let us know how we can help you. You know, if you want to have st strategy conversations or leadership conversations, uh, let us know, and we can we can pretty easily and readily mobilize um, a chat and uh, or or a webinar or just you know a group uh, like an online meeting. So keep us in mind for that. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, and I would just say do your best to keep us plugged in. To your work especially as you shift to your engagement models we love to amplify the things that are ha happening in the sector i love seeing uh, some of the strategy work or deep learnings or the connections being made right now um, starting to come out of the sector i think this is a great chance for us to gather around each other and amplify and share our message thanks rod simon anything from you or anything from the chat you want to share uh, well, I think Pat and Rod covered it really nicely. So just a, a big thanks to everyone for, for tuning in this morning and as well just for your kind of continued work and, and your, your ongoing work on the ground. We, we really appreciate it. And we know these are difficult and uncertain times, but I've been pretty amazed to see the response from the community. So thanks. Thanks to everyone for your time. Great. Thanks. Um, so thank you again for being here. We wish all of you the very best health and send you all a lot of warmth. Um, and we'll be signing off in a few minutes here, but uh, we look forward to our paths crossing again, either online or uh, in person when the time is right. So thank you for being here. Have a great day. Bye-bye.